Um, today I'm going to show you how to easily set up Edcard Home in your home environment um, to act as a uh, network-wide ads and tracker blocking DNS server. It has a few other beneficial features such like uh, uh, there's like some basic built-in parental control and some other stuff. If you look at if you look at the uh, comparison here real quick, so uh, Edgar Home can do any of those, right? So it has a built-in DHCP server which can come in quite handy. Uh, it up, upstream servers from Edgar Home server that you will install to the upstream servers, it's encrypted DNS. Uh, so DNS over HTTPS or DNS over TLS or DNS script. It's cross-platform because you install it in front of everything else. So no need to install any app on your devices. Uh, just use the DNS, uh, the, use the Edgar Home IP address as the DNS of your devices. Um, yeah, mentioned already DNS of HTTPS, obviously. It can do blocking of phishing and malware domains. It can do uh, a little bit of parental control, like adult domains, stuff, stuff like that. Uh, access settings, actually, you could specify it uh, per client and device configuration, right? Uh, for safe search on search engines, and it doesn't need privileges, basically. So I want to also say this, right? So if you're looking for something that can cover all ads entirely, it's not the one for you. At DNS level blocker always will have some uh, some limitation, uh, like ads within Facebook, ads within YouTube or Instagram or whatever, you're not going to catch this with it, right? However, having said that, uh, since it's very simple to install, very simple to maintain and, and administer, and it doesn't require big hardware. You could run that on a Raspberry Pi or any any simple uh, box that can run Linux, right? Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty pretty nice to have this as an option. So what we have prepared for today, we have prepared a Ubuntu virtual machine that runs a standard Ubuntu 2020.04 20 and a Windows 11 client where I will show you later on how this is configured on the client side and how it works, really. So with this, let's go and start by connecting via SSH to the Ubuntu server. So I'm logged in here already to the Ubuntu machine via SSH. I made this bigger font so that you guys can actually get a good idea on it, right? So this is a standard Ubuntu 20.04. It's got the latest updates and patches and that's pretty much all there is to it, right? So if you scroll up here on the GitHub page, I will post the links to the particular URLs later in the in the in the description, right? So uh, if you go here to the uh, so there's two ways or three ways actually of doing this. You can obviously do the automated install, which is what we're gonna do here. There's also a way and the link where you can do the uh, manual installation, which is a bit more work, but just as well. Uh, also, it has an official Docker image. You just can simply actually download it as, as a Docker image and run it, spin it up as a Docker image. Uh, and then, of course, the final one would be you could always compile it from source, which is also provided. For the sake of this one, we're going to use this. Let's just verify that curl is installed already on this machine. Sorry. Yep, curl is not here, so we're going to do sudo up install curl to start Chris we provide our password here and we're gonna wait until this is installed to confirm this with yes yep there you go we got curl now right so uh we just basically copy this command that will not do nothing else other than uh get get via curl the the install script which has already info uh, from this particular location uh, so github and then run it in shell and install the tool and you will be surprised how fast this actually is so let's just go here that's basically it download it there you go it's done
I'm not kidding you. Edgard Home is now installed and running. And this is not a joke. So you got your URL here, right? Which is what we're gonna use now to access the admin interface to complete the installation actually, right? So open here another window, go for it. So there you go. That's what you will see when you first go to this standard page, get started. So this error, uh, there's obviously the instruction on how to fix this error, uh, since this is a known thing. However, for the sake of our uh, tutorial today, I'm just gonna bind it only to the to the LAN address, which is what I'm gonna use to access it later for my clients to use DNS. And therefore, we don't need to fix this now. But like you saw, there's a link and it clearly details on how you fix this problem, right? So this is basically it. It will give you a warning here that uh, since there's a static IP usually required, right? Uh, but however, leave it at that. It is not really needed for our demo. But if you do run this at home, you want to give it a static IP address so that you don't run into problems when when the, IP, when the lease runs out or whatever, and it's losing the IP address, right? So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna say next here. So we have to give a username. Let's say we call it admin, give it a password, whatever that might be. And then we go to the next step, which is already to configure your devices, right? So we have here router configuration. If you want to configure a router directly, like for example, you have this device in your network and you want all your uh, router connected devices go through this. You can just configure the router with the DHCP and DNS settings, since this comes also as a DHCP server, right? It's very simple, very straightforward. Or for each of the uh, each of the common OS like iOS, Android, macOS, there's simple instruction on how you can do that manually, right? That's another way. For today, I'm gonna focus on Windows, and this is something we just uh, if you wanna use DNS over HTTPS or DNS over TLS, you need to configure the encryption in, in, in LangGuard Home, right? And there's a separate uh, setup on how you how you do this, right? This is also very simple to install, actually, right? So having said that, let's go back to the Windows machine here. So as I said, we have a Windows machine already prepared. So let's close this real quick. So the first thing we're just going to do is Right click your network connection, open the network and stuff. Then you just say here, change adapter options, right? So we have one adapter here, which is the Ethernet zero. We say properties. Then we're gonna go and select the correct one, either V4 or V6, whatever you're gonna use or whatever you're using, and click on properties. You see, this is all set to dynamically or automatically get the information, but we wanna change this in particular, we want to change the DNS server address. So now what are we going to change it to for this? We go back here to our config here and we're going to change it to this. Yeah. So this is all we need to do. Let's go back to our VM here. I sorry, to our VM and just paste this in here. That's it. DNS server set. Click OK. Click close. Close all this, no need anymore. And we verify this. We can verify this by running a command. Prompt. And we add this lookup. And it should automatically go to the just configured DNS server, which then will forward it upstream service. So having said this, now if we go back to our dashboard here, we say next, and we already should say open dashboard and see once we log in the first connections there and as you can see there's already queries we can check them out so this is mostly microsoft what a surprise also quite interesting to see what kind of queries are going out there right so yeah that's pretty much it and now we can probably do the following let's do a little test for example let's say um, we open Edge and we open Facebook.com. Very common, right? So as you will see, it will open up here, right? 
go verify it here on the dashboard. See particular requests to Facebook, some other subdomains, some other Facebook domains. So now what you can do, for example, as a start, right? So this is the dashboard again. Here's the dashboard. Already some stuff was blocked by filters, which is usually uh, tracking and and stuff, plain DNS that you don't want anymore, right? So um, as you can see, all this was blocked and this is the client IP, obviously, that's the Windows machine. So now we could go here and say, let's go to the filters, right? Uh, blocked services, for example. So there's a lot of uh, default services that are created here. You can modify that, you can configure this, right? Let's say we use Facebook as an example. So we're gonna block Facebook, we're gonna say save. And then here, so here's the, go back to the Windows machine. Let's close the browser. Open up the browser again. Let's try to get to Facebook again. Ah, there you go. You can read this page and look at the error. It says DNS prop finished, non existing domain. So, this is the, more or less what a DNS black calling does exactly. It will tell you this domain is not existing. It will redirect it to, to something non existing, right? So, let's go back to the, to the dashboard here, right? So, uh, here you can refresh the statistics, stuff like this. So obviously there's a lot of uh, information that you get, top queried domains, top blocked domains, uh, top clients. So right now, obviously we don't have more than one, it's just one, but all this you will see here, right? And settings, we can go through this real quick, right? So block domains using filters and host files. You can also use, uh, other other services here, right? So enable the lock. You could anonymize the client IP if that is a requirement, and then query lock retention is 90 days. Uh, statistics, you can also get that over 24 hours. Um, other settings here, DNS settings, right? So up, that's the upstream DNS, right? As you see, uh, HTTPS upstream. You could do here load balancing, parallel request, fastest IP address. There's lots of configuration that you can actually do here. Uh, and this is also quite interesting to do. Encryption settings again. Uh, if you enable this one, right, it will then mean that your admin interface will work with HTTPS and DNS server will listen for requests on DNS over HTTPS or DNS over TLS. There's some uh, prerequisites, which I showed you earlier, just read up for this and then you will see that this works quite well as well. This is very simple and I show you that maybe in another in another video to bring you up to speed with this one. Um, other settings, obviously your client settings, you could do specific configuration per client here. Yeah, that's not a problem. You can, you can do that and uh, then make, for example, specific block list or specific, specific uh, stuff for a client like for example for your children you could do different kinds of blockings and configuration than for others right and then the dhcp settings right so if you use this for dhcp as well you select the interface here in this case we just have one here and then you just configure uh, the different ranges that you want to give and the static leases if there's any so basic dhcp config really nothing special filters we already have seen dns block lists so we use this per default, but you can add, yeah, so you could, you could add this one, right, uh, okay, check for updates, you could also update this here, right, and then you see, latest update, great, you could also add others if you like, right, so, DNS allow lists, on the other hand, you can put your allow list here, where you can say overall this, no, no matter, if it's, even if it's in a block list, it will still be allowed, right, so, uh, other is blocked services that we have seen already, so, these are the ones that are here, right, that's quite with the click of a button, you can turn this off and on. And custom filtering rules. So examples, very simple on how you can do custom rules as well. It's very powerful, yeah. And this is pretty cool as well. Query lock, you can just simply search for Facebook, for example, and then hit enter and it will find all the domains that were in Facebook. This is also can be quite useful. Um, setup guide. Of course, we have already seen, right? So this is also very simple. And yeah, this is pretty much what you can do with uh, Edgar Home. 
uh, it is really nice, especially if you don't have the advanced needs, like for example, uh, if you say, I don't want YouTube ads to be filtered because I'm a YouTube premium subscriber, I don't get any ads anyway, right? Uh, like, like what I said earlier, right? There are some, some things that it, it, it depends really. Yeah? So think coding is capable of blocking a big percentage of the ad. It is not as flexible and powerful as other stuff that is uh, like traditional ad blockers that you install in the browser add on or stuff like this, right? So you wanna read more about this? This is a very, very good comparison. I'll put all those links in the description later, right? And how they fare against each other and what's your, what's your, What's what's your use case for either of them, right? So maybe maybe what we can still do here is uh, real quick. I open up the edge here again. Let's open Google. Search for cars. Okay, there you go. So scroll here and then we go back to the dashboard and see what we did see here. Yeah. So dashboard, blocked by filters. So you see the stuff, the standard stuff, right? Uh, always will be, always will be blocked, but it's, it's again, there are pros and cons for both worlds. Read for yourself, see for yourself what suits your needs. Why I like this one is it runs on a Raspberry Pi, it runs on any any hardware, as long as it can run Linux, it doesn't need massive RAM, it doesn't need massive storage. It, it just is very simple to maintain and very easy to, to configure as you have seen literally in seconds, right? With this, I, I hope this was kind of useful. If you want to set it up something like this, uh, if you have any questions, just comment on the post. Uh, I'm happy to answer it and for today, have a great one. Take care.